I'm going to talk uh, about some of my work called uh, Arquette of No Parts. This is work that I did just about over a year ago as part of my master's thesis uh, with Leah Beakley in the High Low Tech Research Group. Um, so the work was inspired, um, as the name kind of uh, 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 hints at, um, by uh, how we currently build electronics. So currently electronics are very much influenced by a kit of parts approach to building components, uh, functionality, or packaged and discrete, discrete components. And um, when we think about using a resistor, we think about a standardized component. When we think about making a connection, we think about drawing a trace on a PCB or soldering a wire from A to B. So a kit of parts approach to compartmentalizing electronics functionalities into these different uh, things uh, has influenced how we work with electronics, how we think about electronics, and also, I believe, how uh, resulting electronics that we build look, work, um, and function. And so with a kit of no parts, I wanted to kind of propose a, an alternative style of building electronics. Um, and this illustration is something that I did in order to kind of think a bit about different styles of building and um, especially I wanted to kind of uh, show how I, I believe that the processes so influence the materials that we can draw upon and the resulting artifacts that we can build. And so in industry, the process is very much streamlined towards um, repeatability, um, ease of assembly, and uh, efficiency. And so the materials we draw upon there are, are already kind of select and uh, standardized. They need to fit to this process and the results um, tend to look uh, similar because they're built from the same materials. And, and even kits, even though um, they allow us to iterate and, uh, through different ideas and, and come up with our unique designs, ultimately they constrain us in what we can build because of the parts that they are made up of. And so, as, a, as another style of building, um, I, I think kind of illustrated a craft approach as a kind of individual and flexible approach to working with materials that allows us to draw upon a, a great diversity of different materials because uh, in this, um, in, the, in the craft process, we can work with the qualities of the materials and we can um, work them into uh, final results that are uh, much more diverse and unexpected than if we were drawing upon a select set of parts. And so the kit of parts approach is this idea of taking a craft approach to working with electronics and electricity. And so if we were to build electronics this way, if we wanted a resistor, we wouldn't pick uh, the component. We would make the resistor and we could tailor it to the resistance that we need in our project. Um, so concretely, what I, this was kind of my, my idea. Um, and in order to explore it, I thought I picked a range of craft techniques and materials and um, just basically tried to build functioning circuitry, sensors, actuators, uh, but also just connections, conductors, and resistors um, using these different craft techniques. And I made about uh, 15 or so um, different examples then that showed these different processes, and two of these I'll explain in a bit more detail right now. One of them is, is an approach where you could carve, um, paint and carve um, circuitry from wood. So I, I sand down plywood and coated it and primed it, and then I apply a, a layer of conductive silver paint. Um, and then I can, carve, I can plan out my circuit and I can carve away the paint um, to leave only the connections that I want. Um, I then can glue down or I can carve out uh, recessions for the parts that I'm using in my kit of no parts. Um, and then I, I apply additional paint on top to make a connection between the traces and the beads on the part. And so while it seems even contradictory to myself that in this kit of no parts I'm drawing upon parts, the, it's not really co a contradiction in the sense that I think of um, the, the, the kit of parts is the it's the system that's constraining us. It's not the individual part by itself and how we can creatively use it, but it's this idea of we start to be like, if I want to connect something, this is the one way to do it, and this has to work with this. 
So actually taking a part out of its system makes you, forces you to work creatively. How do I connect to the leads of a component that's been standard for, standardized for a certain um, system? So, um, so I do use parts, uh, especially to kind of show how some things can function. Um, and, but, but I also try to make some of them myself. So the battery holder here, for example, is just a press fit coin cell between two screws that have been screwed into the wood. And, and this is a quick video that just shows that it actually works. Um, the microcontroller was programmed to detect uh, the resistance of your skin on the two leads and to just toggle between the LED lights. It was just a demo of how it works. And then another technique that I really enjoyed working with was um, kind of sculpting three-dimensional circuitry. Um, I used Fimo. Um, and then I fired it in the oven, and I applied uh, the silver paint to the final, where I wanted uh, conductors, conductive connections to be. And then I plated um, these uh, connections, and then reassembled uh, the circuit. And so plating uh, involved uh, submerging the, the FIMO that has been coated in a conductor in a plating bath and applying a current across it. And so what's nice is that you get a buildup of metal, and if it's a flexible material, the, whereas the paint would crack, the, the copper actually flexes with it, makes it a durable circuit, and it's also aesthetically nice um, effect. So this is also just a quick video showing that it works. And what was nice here, the process of working, was not thinking in terms of a two-dimensional surface with the circuitry, but I was able to literally jump over traces. And so all these examples I documented and compiled into a website called A Kid of No Parts. And um, I organized them by, by electron, electronic functionality or by part um, and by craft. So you could, if you're looking to make a capacitor for your project, you could, you could browse by capacitors and find out lots of different craft techniques for making capacitors. Or you could, working with paper, you could browse ways to cut and paint um, electronics. And I uh, came to think about these um, recipes, as I call them, as recipes, because especially in the two examples I showed, I didn't, ha I didn't use any um, computerized machinery to produce any of the design, so there were no source files to share. So it's, it's very much, in order to document, it's much like writing a recipe in order that others can um, replicate what I've done. And in other um, cases, I have got source files in laser cutting uh, traces. Um, but even there, there's a lot of information that's not contained in the data format of the source file, where I then, again, I, I add it in or I include it as part of this recipe idea of documenting electronics. And um, so because at the beginning in the illustration, I kind of wanted to make the point that the materials uh, the processes of building influence what materials we build with and what the results look like. I thought it would be nice to show not just these examples of like how can you make, how can you carve a circuit, but what would we really build if we did build by different means. And so these are two very recent projects that I've done in the last two months together with my collaborator Mika Satomi. Um, and they're, I think they're nice examples to show um, what we might build if we built this craft approach. So the first um, was part of the Techno Central exhibition that Valerie talked about. It's called The Crying Dress. And uh, we imagined ourselves in the future where electronics had become expensive because the raw materials had become rare. Um, and so instead of mass produced um, devices, rich people could commission their own custom electronics. And so in this future, what would a rich person commission or a wealthy or powerful person commission as something very custom to themselves? And we thought that uh, maybe a rich husband who knew he was going to die and wanted his wife uh, to be accompanied in her sorrow and time of mourning would commission a, a funeral gown that would cry with her. And so we embroidered circuitry onto, we designed a funeral gown, and tailored it, and, um, and sewed it. And then we embroidered um, the electronics onto the gown, and uh, we made our own speaker coils by embroidering them, um, and our own sensors on the skirt that detect the tears that fall from a headpiece onto the skirt. And this is a not so great video, but it shows a bit how it works. 
So the watcher drips from the headpiece onto the dress, and uh, when the drops uh, reach the skirt, they bridge contacts on the embroidery, and we might take that resistance value and map it to a frequency that we play out through the speakers on the upper part of the dress, and it creates an overlay of um, frequencies that sounds uh, quite choral, and um, so that's the mourning of the, the, the dress to accompany uh, the wife at the field. And then there was just this last project um, that I'll just quickly skip through. Um, I was at a textile university in Sweden and we were looking to design our own conductive fabrics because if you just skip, skip the video, but if uh, you buy conductive fabrics today commercially, they're very plain, they're basically metallized lycras um, and uh, Teflon and the tent materials. And so we thought, what if we, if we were making them ourselves and we wanted to look at um, design aesthetics and also the craft of weaving. So we learned how to weave and wove some uh, conductive textiles. Uh, so that is the end. And I have uh, demos over at the demo session if you're interested to see any of the work that I've shown in this slide.